Hey gang, Sean here for VFX Jams. In this episode, we're going to continue on with our film damage series. And in this particular episode, we're going to create big film scratches, gargantuan film scratches, or, you know, average-ish film scratches. Now, uh, this might be stating the obvious, but a film scratch happens of this scale happens when actually something gets caught in the gate and just scratches the crap out of the film. So we're going to create that effect right now. All right, so we're going to begin, as we always do, with a piece of footage. I'm using our Santa Monica Pier footage we've been using for this. You can use whatever footage you like. We're going to drag it into the timeline, which will create our comp, as we do, as we've been doing. And now we're going to apply this particular effect to a solid. So once you're down in your timeline here, right mouse click, new, solid, make comp size. We want this to be black, so make sure it's black down here. Click OK. And let's label that dude. So big scratches. Boom. All right, now we want to apply turbulent noise to this. I know that's a shocker if you've done some of these other tutorials. We've been using this plugin a lot. Uh, so effect, turbulent noise, which is in noise and grain. Bottom one, boom, turbulent noise. And there we go. There's the default. So fractal type, noise type stay the same. Contrast, we're going to crank up to 250. And brightness, we are going to tick down to minus 100. And we will, we want to affect the scaling, so that's under transform. Now, in this particular situation, we want to turn off uniform scaling, so we can affect the width and the height separately. So our width will be 20, and our height will be 600. All right. Now, we also want to affect the offset here. And what that'll do is that'll move the, um, the, the lines or the scratches that we're creating. It's going to move them subtly around on the, the, the footage. What that'll look like, it'll look like the film was being scratched not perfectly uh, you know, through the middle. It'll, it'll wander just a little bit on your film with any luck. So fingers crossed. So now this is done with an expression. So... Easy way to do that is hold down your option key if you're on a Mac, and if you're on a PC, I can't remember. You know, I really will look that up, because uh, I don't know. So we want to hold down the option key and click on the stopwatch, which will create an expression for us. And we want to go down in here where you actually enter the expression. Now this particular expression is a wiggle expression, very uh, very commonly used, very um, very helpful. And um, we want to make that 0 0.5 comma 3. And if you want to know what these, what that actually means, uh, hit me up in comments and I'll uh, see if I can ex describe it or explain it better or explain it at all and uh, perhaps maybe even do a video about it. So once we have that, that's good to go. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, go into our random seed in the evolution options. Random seed. Now we want to add uh, an expression here as well. So again, option if you're on a Mac. Stopwatch, we've got one down here. Now in this one we want to create or we want to, to input the time expression which we've used on some of the other uh, tutorials if you've watched them and times but instead of the the 24 that we've been using which is the frame rate of our footage we're actually going to do three. So that means that the the the, the random seed or the pattern that it throws up will change every eight frames because eight times three is 24. So now that I've totally confused everybody, that's what you do for that. So that takes care of that. Now our blending mode will remain uh, normal, the default, and that's it for the turbulent noise. So click that up so it makes room for our next plugin, which is Fast Blur. So we go into Flash Fast Blur. Blurriness, we want to crank up way up to 2400. And we want to change the dimension to just vertical. And let's turn repeat edge pixels on. What that basically means is sometimes when you use fast blur, the edges will not become blurred or they won't get blurred. And what this basically says is it says extend the blur past the canvas. So, or at least to the edge of the canvas. So that takes care of fast blur. And we'll click that up. Next thing we want to create or add is a levels that's under color correction. Boom, levels, boom. Now, this is, we can't see much here, and that's because we need to, it's really subtle, so we got to crank it up. So we're going to do that with the levels here. So grab your, your input white point, which is this, this little guy right here, 
and slide it all the way to the left. And then we will start to see lines appear. See that? Boom, there we go. And now you can you can crank it all the way up, which will actually, you don't wanna go all the way, but just shy of that. And that'll make super dark lines. I find that that looks less realistic than more like this. And that gives a sense that there are deeper lines uh, and more shallow lines, as you can see here. So it's, you know, the thing didn't go all the way through the emulsion or partially or that kind of thing. So a little more subtle, a little more realistic. So that's it for levels. And again, this is one of those things you can go back and tweak later. So we'll turn that up. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to add turbulent displace. Now, what this does is this is like a cousin to turbulent noise. If you can look these, if, look at these lines, they're, they're kind of too perfect. That looks like a machine made that. So, because guess what? A machine made that. So we want to mess that up a little bit. So, or just make it a little more irregular. So we want to go to distort turbulent displace right here. And now, okay, so that's obviously too crazy. So we want to back that off quite a bit, but you kind of get the idea of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make that line a little more irregular. So we're going to do that through, we're going to change this to horizontal displacement. And we're going to make it very subtle. So we want to take the amount down to two and we want to make the size 25. And see how that, see, see how it's just like, it just looks more realistic, looks more natural. Let me turn it off and turn on. See, it just kind of gives it a little more organicness to it, if that's a word, it is now. Organicness, look it up. All right, so that, and we want to change the complexity, or actually we want to, we want to leave it at one. So can mess with that that'll make it a little more crunchy if you want but uh and you could you could do that you know what i say let's do let's do three why not right uh, how about, let's split the difference if you're in the visual effects business you know what split the difference means it means i don't know do half of that so that's it so we split the difference turbulent displace congratulations you're now in the visual effects business all right, so now we want to add just a subtle glow to that. Just like there's a little bit of extra light coming through that because you've actually scraped part of the film. So you've actually, you know, made it shallower. How's this for a poor explanation? So more light comes through. So again, this is just going to be super subtle. So we just want to add glow just a little bit, stylize, glow. And this we are going to see threshold. We're going to make that 24%. See how it brightened it just a hair? Let me turn it off and turn it on. I don't know if you can see this on the YouTubes, but uh, hopefully so. So 24 and then the radius we want to leave at 10 and glow intensity 0.2, so super subtle. And it gives it just a little bling. I mean, this is, this is like subtle stuff, guys. So glow, done. All right, so click that dude up. And now we want to actually change the layer blend mode. We're almost home, guys. So this should be, we've got to bring up our modes here, column modes. And we want to change this from normal to add. So there you have a film scratch. Okay, and, and you know what? Let's play this back real quick so you can see what's going on here. So you can see the, the glory of our scratches here. We'll let it play just a just a, a, a second or two here, so you can kind of get the idea. That should be enough. So you can see some movement, and you know you might even want to play with this a little bit in the context. Uh, if you want to make it a little more random, if that seems too static to you, you could go back into your turbulent noise, and on the um, random seed we had it times time time times three if you remember that as a matter of fact let's look at it if you want to see your keyframes that you've set or your expressions quickly on all of your your effects that you have click on your layer here and click u or, or type u on your keyboard that means uber keys and that'll show everything so that's a quick way to just jump in and look at your 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 keyframes and stuff so in this case you know what let's go let's try eight so it'll change up every three frames It'll make it a little more random, which means it'll be just a hair more exciting. 
There you go. So maybe that's, you know, maybe it's really up to you. That might be a little more realistic. So uh, really, again, soup to taste, whatever makes sense for you. All right, so that's pretty much it. There is an optional thing that I want to offer up. Um, actually, a couple. The first thing is, I'll leave it at full opacity here, but the the one thing that you may want to do that you may have seen in some plugins is that when something scratches through the emulsion, sometimes it doesn't, well, it wouldn't scratch through all the color layers equally, the dyes in the um, in the actual film. It wouldn't, it wouldn't slice through those equally. So you would get a, a tint color. So, and uh, more often than not, that is green. So let's create that effect. So color correction, tint, almost to the bottom there. And we want to map the white point to a green. And now I usually do something kind of like, uh, like here and then just go all the way up there. And there you have sort of the green tint. So let's make it, let's push a little more towards red. Something like that, let's say. So before, after. So it gives a sense of an emulsion. Now, obviously if you're doing black and white, if you wanna do old, old school, old timey black and white footage, you would not use this because there was no color dye in the old footage. So that's that. Now, uh, one last thing, if you want to make this subtle, uh, this might, uh, go without saying, but you can just lower the opacity of the layer. Again, shortcut key to do that is T and just turn this down. I think in the, when I threw together an example, I think I put it at 20. So, and you might find that's pretty subtle. You might want to crank it up a little bit. And again, you know, the film damage look, um, looking at a single frame is a good starting place, but it's always important to play it back so you can see what it looks like in the context of moving footage, since this is very much a dynamic effect. So I put it at 70 there. Whoa, look at that one. Yeah, so you know, not too shabby. There you go. Might be a little too green, but that's generally the idea. So that is big scratches for the film damage look. So if you've enjoyed this, as always, subscribe and we'll continue to bring more tutorials to you. And thanks for watching.